Uh, I got some statistics here, and I want to come to you, uh, Dr. Kenneth Barker, your general editor of the uh, NIV New Study Bible. And the fact is, is that in uh, the first, uh, I think, uh, 400 years from 1611, or I'm saying from 1611, it took uh, uh, up to the present time for the King James Version to sell 350 million copies approximately. Is that about right? Yes. And mm -hmm. in only 15 years, the Bible that you have uh, helped edit and so on, put together, the NIV New Study Bible, has already sold approximately 100 million copies in just 15 years. And so by actual cash register counts right now, it is by far the, uh, the best-selling Bible going. And, uh, well, another... Uh, 50 years, and the fact is you will have sur superseded all the Bibles that have been sold in the last uh, uh, whatever number of years, 400 years from the time of the 1611. What do you attribute the success of the NIV Bible to, and then talk to this thing, is that you didn't base it on either the Textus Receptus, and you didn't base it on the 1769 text. <clears throat> How did you put it together? John, I'm glad you mentioned that uh, it is a best-selling Bible because I think it's phenomenal that uh, there are already uh, approximately 100 million NIV Bibles and New Testaments in uh, worldwide circulation and use. And I think an appropriate question is the one you ask, why? Uh, I have two answers to that, uh, the divine and the human. Since the Bible is a divine and human book, I believe that there's a divine and human answer to that question. On the divine side, I believe that God in His sovereignty, His providence, His, his goodness, His grace has simply been pleased to thus bless and prosper and use the NIV. But God uses people, so I think there's also a human dimension to the answer. And on the human side, I believe that there were millions and millions of people who were looking for a balanced translation, and they believe they found it in the NIV. Today, all translations, all major standard committee produced translations can be placed in one of three categories. There are those that take a more literal or word-for-word -word approach to the translation task, and that's where I would put the uh, King James, the New King James, and the NASB. Uh, then at the, opposite, uh, at the opposite side of that, uh, there are translations that take a very free approach to the translation task, and uh, that is where I would put uh, works like the uh, Good News Bible and the Living Bible. On the other hand, there's a middle ground. This is the third area. There's a middle ground, and we have said in print that it was not our aim to produce either one of those other two, but rather our goal was to produce a mediating translation, one that would find the best balance among all the others hopefully being neither too literal nor too free, but a translation that would find the best balance, trying to capture the best of both worlds. And I believe there were millions of people who were looking for that type of translation, and they believe they found it in the NIV. And I think on the human side, that's the main reason for its uh, tremendous uh, popularity. When you talk about the New King James Version, which is based on the same Greek text as the 1611, they don't like your version, Art. What's going on here? Why did you bring out the New King James Version and then answer those objections? We brought it out because we wanted to bring the King James tradition up to date, which has already been done before. And it's a conservative and, I believe, godly and literary update of the King James. We're, we're sort of between Ken's NIV and Don's N NASB in the sense that we are we're more literal than the NIV, but we're more literary than the NASB because we're based on the King James, which is great literature, and the old ASV of 1901 was not. Uh, we've been on the planet a shorter time than the NIV, but we're doing very well. Nelson, the original publishers, has sold 20 million, and at least four Bible societies, including the British and American, uh, give it out. It's used for our daily bread, which is an enormously widely used devotional. And uh, it's been very well received. Mm -hmm. And as far as the text, we didn't want to make the mistake of the English Revised of 1885, 
they snuck in a different Greek text, which was not part of their mandate. And uh, we felt we're updating a standard work. We should stick with what they translated from. In other words, the Masoretic, and that's not much controversy about that in the Old Testament. And the traditional text used by the Greek-speaking church for many, many centuries, as my father would say, from the year one. And, um, but we have footnotes giving majority text readings, which are my favorite, and critical text, which would be Dan's favorite. So on every page of the New Testament, we show things as they are. No, I do not accept the uh, New King James because the New King James does not totally follow the Tectus Receptus, but in many, many places follows the same text as the NIV or the NASB, and so uh, at least the translations certainly that's, show that's that. That's not true. Or at least they show the, the dynamic equivalence, the change of words that are comparable.